Hi, I'm painter master Karen Boniker, and I would like to welcome you to another Paint Like Bob Ross session using Painter. Today I am using the new version of Painter 2019. During this session, you will be painting the digital version of Bob's beautiful painting, Blue Moon, using the new Blue Moon brush pack from Painter and for Painter Essentials as well. So let's get started. To begin, I'd like you to open a new file, and we're going to set that to 17 by 11 at 150 ppi. To do that, we'll simply go to File and choose New, and we can set that to inches from the Options flyout, and 17 by 11 at 150, and select OK and you'll get a nice big canvas to work on. Also you'll want to open your mixer pad option fly out and choose open mixer pad. You can do that by selecting this option and choosing open mixer pad. And if you have the Bob Ross color palette that would be great if you could uh, upload that and use that and use the mixer pad. You can download the mixer pad from the Corel Discovery Center or my website at digitalartacademy.com. There's also some bonus brushes there for you in the menu tab. I find it helpful to create a custom palette which includes all the brushes I will be using for a painting session. You can instantly create your own by dragging the brushes you will be using onto the interface. Once completed, a new custom palette is created. You can repeat this process to add all the brushes you want to access for this session. So simply said, when you open your Blue Moon brush category and you want to create a custom palette of your own, Simply hold down the shift key, drag that brush onto the interface, and a new custom palette is created for you. If you want to change the view, you can right click and choose text or icon. And if you choose text, it'll change that brush to the text view icon. You'll notice that I have mine all set up and ready to go. And again, I find this very helpful in my painting process because I can see the brushes, I know what they are, and I can go on and create a smooth workflow. We're going to begin by filling or toning the canvas. There are two ways you can go about this. One is to fill the canvas with the darkest value of Mountain Mix. And to do that, we'll come over to our mixer pad and using our alt key or our dropper key to sample color we're going to go ahead and select this dark blue mountain mix and it is very dark so you want to go um, either in the phthalo blue or the mountain mix go to that darker color it really depends on your preference of blue and where you want to go um, even sampling the darkest value of the phthalo blue is a nice color and it's very close to what I have here. And then Command F and we'll make sure that the opacity is all the way up and we've got this nice dark blue that we can fill our canvas with. And we've started our basic toning. Now I want to show you another way that's very creative and a nice painterly way you can get started with this as well. Command A and Backspace and we'll remove that canvas color and we're going to come over to the Interactive Gradient. The Interactive Gradient tool is on the property bar, the toolbar, and we'll go ahead and select that and at the very top of the canvas, towards the center, we're going to simply drag out. We're going to simply gra drag out our gradient, 
and you'll notice that I have it set to a preset which is a custom gradient that I created and I like the colors of it but again remember that if you want to change the colors at any point simply just select your color from your either your color libraries your color wheel or your mixer pad select the color and it will automatically fill so all you need to do is is click on each one of these nodes and the color will fill so you'll see that I have the darkest value at the top a mid value in the center and the lightest value at the bottom now I want to do something a little different with this and create create what we call express paint so to do that I'm going to come down to the option called soft dabs and I want to be able to preview what that looks like so I'm going to select soft dabs show and select the preview option here and you can see what happens it starts to fill in and give you a kind of a painterly quality breaks up that paint and is a real nice place to start so I'm going to go ahead and stick with that and select the commit gradient option and now I've got a nice toned canvas with a little bit of extra texture on it that I can get started with next we will add the moon we're going to select the moon glow and on a new layer we're going to create the moon when you choose a color for your moon be sure that you're working at the lighter values and in the blue tones so if you choose the phthalo blue or the Prussian blue make sure you're in that lighter to mid value area and then you'll get a nice glow in your moon and then just that simple pressure and continue in a rather circular motion and the moon will just appear the next step is to paint a few clouds clouds will be brighter the closer they are to the light source which is the moon and less saturated if they are further away You'll want to observe this rule throughout the painting process as you apply other elements. Remember, this is your painting, so have fun and paint the clouds in your unique way. For the clouds, use the Blue Moon Oil, Cloud Glow, and the Glassy Ocean to create wispy edges. Let's get started. If you're feeling confident, then work on the canvas layer and don't worry about adding additional layers. However, if you feel you need a little flexibility, you're not quite sure what you're looking for and where you want to go with the painting quite yet, then feel free to add a new layer and just simply work with a default composite method and begin painting in your clouds. You'll notice that I'm using the Blue Moon Oil here to develop a few clouds up in the sky. I'll bring those clouds pretty close to where I envision, envision the horizon line being. What we'll use here is the glassy ocean brush and you can use this brush to create the wispy edges of clouds in the sky. Blend the clouds but don't overdo it as you blend blend away from the light source notice how the paint becomes less saturated and fades away from the primary light source so a good brush for that is using the glassy ocean brush and then just pull those edges away and remember this is your painting you can paint those clouds any way you'd like just have fun. The next step is to add water reflections. But first, let's define the horizon line. Select the blue waves brush with a brush size of 38 to 40 and run it directly across the horizon line. And you're going to want to 
um, work this way. So I'm going to go ahead and resize that brush up a little bit. Right about, right about there is good. I'm going to use and hold down the V key and I'm going to choose a lighter value, just a kind of a mid value. And we're going to locate the horizon line and I think we'll start it right about here and run it directly across and just let it fill in. Remember to select the B key once again and that will get you back to simply brushing and painting with a brush without receiving that straight line. With the Blue Waves brush I'm going to sample a few of the colors here and you'll notice that I'm working uh, on a new layer. However, you can work directly on the canvas layer if you prefer. I want to retain a little bit of this light at the distant horizon here. This would serve as that area of um, reflection from, this, from the moon. And I just want to keep a little sliver of that running across. So I'll break it up a little bit in certain areas. And then as I come closer in, to the beach line, I'll sample some additional colors and just pull those colors in. in. Now these darker values are going to help to form our waves which we're going to begin next. These are just simple vertical horizontal lines, I'm sorry, and just use varying color changes here. We'll start to form our beach line. And you'll want to come about midpoint at the ocean level and just bring it over to the corner so you have a little bit of an edge, a soft curve on that beach line. We're going to move to the brush called Blue Waves and you're going to start to form the waves which are easy and rather straightforward to do. For the waves, we'll use the Blue Waves to paint the form of the waves where you want them to be and then use blue moon oil to add shape and a bit of blending to the paint. So let's go ahead and begin by sampling using our alt key. We'll start with a this wave which is furthest out and we'll just build up that shape of the wave by simply brushing up And we've got another wave that we can form right here by just sampling the color. And these are just quick little brush strokes. And we've got one wave kind of back here in the distance. And we'll let that just kind of softly recede. And we'll build this one up a little higher. This would be the actual face of the wave. We'll move then to the next brush which we're going to use to define and shape the waves a little bit further and that's the Blue Moon Oil Brush. And once we've done that, you'll notice how you can kind of shape this wave 
and notice the lovely blending that you get with this brush. And you'll want that brush to just pull up the face of that foreground wave. We've got another wave in the back here. We'll let that kind of come up on this side. We'll just notice how I'm just pulling from that lighter value in the water and pulling up into the wave to create that face of this breaking wave. We'll soften this one a little bit back here because this has gotten pretty much into the distance here. And so we'll just soften this whole area. And again, we're using the Blue Moon Oil Brush to do that. Pull up again with those lighter values into the face of the wave. I might even bring my brush size up a little bit further. And again, I'm pulling up from this light value here. Now I'll pull away or into the shoreline to create a little bit of a look of, of waves that have already broken and coming onto the beach. Pulling back into the wave. Just creating this nice breaking wave area here. And you can see how setting up that gradient with dark to light really helps as we develop the beach area. Now I can sample my lighter values and use that as the tops of the breaking waves or just even to show a wave breaking here. I like to sample the lighter blue values too and kind of develop that into the wave. Remember that light source from the moon would also be shining on the wave so you're going to pick up some of that reflective quality on the, in the ocean there as well and remember you can do whatever you want here whatever you know you enjoy whatever feels right to you with your waves We're going to start next by defining the beach where we'll add some grasses, palm trees, and finish off with some flowers. For the beach, we'll sample kind of a mid-color here. You'll notice that I pulled out some green values. Uh, I will tend to mix that a little bit with some Van Dyke brown just to create a nice um, sandy color. And I'm going to pull that right into the corners here and we're just going to start to develop a little bit of a feeling of the uh, uh, sandy beach here and the waves rolling in. And again remember this is your painting <laughs> and you can have fun with it and develop it the way you feel and what you enjoy. We'll start with something just like that. And we'll start with the, uh, and create, um, let's see, let's go ahead and begin with our palms. 
And for the actual palm tree, we're going to start on a new layer and we'll go ahead and pick up the brush called Blue Waves. And this time we're going to increase the, the um, paper texture. So we're going to use a little bit different paper texture here. And in Painter, we're going to use the Window Frost. And we'll come over to the Dab Profile option and apply Dab Stencil and we'll base it upon paper. Now you can open that panel by simply selecting the Show or Hide Paper panel and it'll open it up for you. And for this particular palm tree and the actual trunk of the palm, we're going to want to make sure that Random Grain Rotation is selected. And we'll do just a quick couple of quick brush marks here on the canvas just to make sure that's about the size uh, that we want to work with. And I think I might come up just a little bit bigger. Something like that. And we'll start off in this uh, left-hand corner and go up. And then we'll bring another tree in here. Maybe something like that. And you can see that it, that particular paper texture gives us that look of the palm uh, bark, which is, um, you know, adds a little uh, fun to it, a little bit of texture. We'll move next, uh, we'll close this and move next to the brush called the Palm Frond Grainy. And in terms of color, you know, you can really kind of play with this and have fun with it. Again, um, I'm going to start off with nice firm pressure here. And we're just setting up the under value for the, the palm fronds. And you can see that the brush I'm using, um, I like to work with this brush with a little bit larger um, brush size. I really like the effect that it gives you when the brush is larger. And you can see that it's just kind of setting up kind of a grainy look. The next thing we'll do is go to the palm frond brush. Now this brush has no grain. We'll reset it. And again, I've got a nice size here that I'm working with. And I'm just going to start to pull in some highlights on the edges. So I've created kind of that underpainting for the palm. And now I'm just going to pull out some of those highlights for the palm tree. Maybe some lighter value here, right at the point where, and do I want to go bigger with the brush? I think I do. So I'm going to go a little larger and right where the moon would be catching the light. I'll pull in a little lighter value on those palms. And then I'll end up with something similar to that. Um, the Blue Moon Oil can also be used, and I'm going to pick up this value here from my mixer pad, and I'm just going to use it to add a little bit of texture and a little bit of highlight just on the edges here. Now it may be too oily a brush and you can always go and use the um, Blue Waves brush which also will do a good job and you can go in and just touch the edges here to create a little bit of that feeling of highlight and reflection on the side of the trunk that's closest to the reflective quality of the moon. And that gives you a nice little contrast of color there. For the sand, we're going to go and choose the brush called the Wet Sand Brush. And again, you can set this brush to have a little bit of texture if you'd like. And I'm just going to go a little bit lighter in value. 
and just pull in a little bit of reflection here and different values of color into the sand. Now you don't have to use texture with this brush. You can take off, apply dab stencil, just use um, your basic paper texture. And we'll go ahead and open that and go to the basic. And you can see that that's a lot softer look there and that may be more of what you're looking for. And I'm just going to pull that right up to the edge of where the waves are breaking. And that just gives us that nice feeling of sand on the beach. We'll use the beach grasses and if I use this brush going from the left corner to the right you'll see that I get these nice look of beach grasses. Add up a little bit, not quite as many grasses, something like that. And then the next brush we can use there is, um, let's go with our Bougainvillea. And with this brush, you'll want to pick up kind of a pink value here because the bougainvillea that you typically see on the beaches are usually um, nice pink, purple values. And you can just kind of fill in one corner. And we'll go ahead and put the flowers in first kind of the area we think we'd like them. Maybe a few over here as well. You can keep your darker values at the corners and then use, we'll go back to default with a brush, and then your lighter values where the moon would re be reflecting off of those flowers. And finally, let's add some stars in the sky and maybe some ferns as well. Now I might mention that the palm brush will also work very nicely for creating the look of ferns. And actually I'll do that for you to show you. We'll pick up a nice um, fern color here, a nice green. And we'll pull out maybe the look of ferns right here with this brush. And then the actual blue fern brush you can use as well. And it creates a nice fern look. You can just have fun with these brushes. And then let's put some stars up in the sky as well. So we have a brush here called the Stars Brush. And of course, we're going to create a nice, select a nice light color. And we'll go ahead and just pull in some stars. And keep firm pressure on the brush when you're applying the stars. And that way, you'll get a nice variance. Now you can go on to, um, there is a brush here called the Wave Blender, which is a nice brush to work with. Let's go ahead and select these layers and drop them now. 
so we're all in one layer and you can just use that brush to do a little bit of soft blending on your waves. I like uh, selecting the blue waves brush and we'll go with a smaller brush size here and maybe show a little bit of white water coming up onto the beach here. A little bit of reflection right here. And We'll select the Blue Moon Oil again and use that to just soften our brush strokes. Now remember that you can always go on and do more, add more to your painting more clouds, do some more blending, and don't forget you can even go into your Mystic Mountain brush category and pick up some of your favorites from that and maybe develop the clouds further and just have fun with this. So thanks for joining me and I look forward to seeing your work. Take care.